Good day and thank you for joining us for today's session. If you can remember in the last session we did algebraic equations with brackets so this week we'll be doing algebraic equations with fractions. So basically we'll just be dealing with x or any type of variable being a numerator denominator or both and we'll be solving for that specific variable. So without further ado let's get into our first example. So the first example given to us is x over 4 minus x over 3 is equal to a half. So looking at this now, we need to first look for what is our LCM, okay? What is our lowest common multiple between 4, 3 and 2? So if we're going to look at that, we can see that the lowest common multiple here is going to come out to 12, right? So what happens now with that 12? This 12, the first step that we're going to do is we're going to divide it by the 4. So once we divide the 12 by the 4, we get 3, right? Once we get that, we are going to times it by the numerator. Okay, so the answer that we get from dividing 12 by 4, we're going to times it by the numerator. And we're going to get our answer of 3x, right? Because 12 divided by 4 is 3. 3 times x is 3x. So now we're going to look at the next term. So now we're doing 12 divided by 3. 12 divided by 3 will give me 4. 4 times x is going to give me 4x. But remember, we have this a negative sign here in front of the fraction so that's going to carry down with the negative with the 4x so it will be negative 4x so now we'll put in our equal to sign now we're going to move on to the last term in this question which is 2 I mean a half so what's going to happen is we're going to divide 12 by 2 T 12 divided by 2 is going to give us 6 and we're going to do 6 times 1 so once we do that, 6 times 1 will remain 6. So now what's going to happen is we're going to do 3x minus 4x. So now we're basically just doing our solving for x, okay? You can see all of our variables on the left, all our numbers on the right. So now we can solve for it. So we get a negative x here is equal to 6. But now remember, we can't have a variable as a negative, right? We can't have a variable as a negative, so what we need to do is we need to change it to a positive. And because we're changing this side to a positive, the, opposite, the other side of the equal sign will become a negative. Okay, So we're basically timesing this side by a negative. So we'll do the same to the other side, right? We'll times this side by a negative 1, which is going to give us a positive x. And we're timesing this side by a negative 1, so we're getting a negative 6x. So now let's look at another example, okay? So in this example, we get given something like this. So this will be example number two. Sorry, let me just fix this up. So it's example number two. So in this case, we get given x plus two over four minus x minus 6 over 3. So you can see here, they've kind of given us a hint to what we need to do if we have two terms as the numerator, right? So straight away, what I want you to do whenever you see two terms as the numerator is to put in brackets, okay? Because that's going to help us with our signs so we don't make mistakes with our signs, right? So that's the first thing we're always going to do if there's two terms as the numerator. We're going to put it in brackets, okay? And then to finish off the sum, it is also equal to a half. So once again, we have the denominators of 4, 3, and 2. So we know that our LCM is 12. So once again, we'll follow the steps that we did before. So the LCM will divide by the denominator of a fraction. So 12 divided by 4, we know is 3. And then it's the 3 will times in to the top of here. So I will write that now is 3 times x 
plus 2. So remember, when it's next to the brackets, it means that you're timesing it into the brackets, right? Then we look at the next fraction. So we're doing 12 divided by the denominator, which will give me 4. 12 divided by 3 is 4. 4 times the numerator. And then again, how we write that is, it will be a negative 4, open brackets, x minus 6. And there we go, is equal to 12 divided by 2 once again, which is 6 times 1 which will leave me with 6 once again. So once we get to this point, we now we times terms into brackets, so we're timesing into the first term, then into the second term. So this is going to give us 3x first, plus 6. Then we're going to times this negative 4. Remember, we count this as a whole term, which is negative 4. So negative 4 is going to times into the first term and then into the second term. So negative 4 times x give me negative 4x. Then negative 4 times negative 6 will give me positive 24 because it's a negative times a negative. And then this side will just be left with 6 again. So now as we know, we will try and get all our variables to the left hand side, all of our numbers to the right hand side, or vice versa. But we'll keep our variables on the left hand side this time. So we'll now have 3x minus 4x is equal to 6. So this positive 6 will take over, we'll get minus 6. And then this 24 over here, positive 24 will come over and we'll get negative 24. Negative 24. So once we work this out, we know 3x minus 4x can give us negative x. We can see here that we have a positive 6 and a negative 6, so they will cancel each other out. And all we're left with on this side is the 24, the negative 24, right? And so we can see both sides are negative. Our variable in particular is negative, so we need to times by negative 1. When we times the side by negative 1, we get left with positive x. And when we times this side by negative 1, we get positive 24. Okay, so we're just cancelling out the negative with another negative. So that was an example with with two terms being the numerator. Very important. The first step is always going to be put numerators in brackets if more than one term. So that's always the first step. Second step we know is, so that was the first step. Second step is always going to be finding your LCM. And then what do we do with this LCM? We divide by denominator, and then what do we do with that? We times it by numerator, and then from there we can just solve for x like we know how, okay? So moving on to another example we have. 4x over 3. This is going to be example number 3, guys. So 4x over 3 is equal to x minus 1 over 3. So we can see here that we have two fractions in this entire equation and we have one term that is not in fraction form. So what would be most ideal for us if, if this x was in a fraction so we could just find the LCM, right? So how can we put this x in a fraction? Remember, remember if we have any whole term, so if we have so, say a term like 3, the fraction form of that 3 would be 3 over 1. Same like if we had 5, fraction form would be 5 over 1. So same case now when we have x, it will be x over 1. Right? So that's how we can bring it out down to a fraction. So we'll now have 4x over 3 is equal to 
x over 1 minus 1 over 3. So if we're looking for the LCM over here, it is 3, right? So now that we have the LCM, we can move on to our steps, right? So we can, as we do, divide by the denominator, get an answer and times by the numerator. So once we divide 3 by 3, we get 1. Then 1 times 4x is going to give me 4x. Now we going to divide 3 by 1 and then times it by x. So if we divide 3 by 1, we get 3 times x will give me 3x. So we have equal to 3x. And then we have here 3 divided by 3, which gives me 1. 1 times 1 gives me 1. And remember, we have a negative sign over there, so it will be negative 1. So then what we're going to do is bring our 3x over the equal to sign. So it will get a negative sign and it will become 4x minus 3x is equal to negative 1. So then we'll be left with x is equal to negative 1. Okay, so moving on to our final example, we'll move back to another simple example. So we have x over 3x is equal to 2 over x. So this is a bit of a different case. We can see now that we have 3x and x as denominators in this case, right? So how are we going to find that the lowest common, um, the lowest common multiple between 3x and x? Well, simply we're just going to look at the numbers, okay? So with finding the lowest common, so we're just going to take the highest variable, okay? So here we have x and we have 3x. So when we're dealing with variables, we just look for the highest variable. So in this case, our LCM is going to be 3x. So when dealing with fractions and we have a denominator that's a variable, we can look for the highest variable. So in this case, it's 3x. So we follow our steps. 3x divided by 3x gives me 1 times x, which is going to give me 1, right? 1x. One so we have x is equal to 3x divided by x is going to give me 3, right? Because the x is going to cancel each other out, right? So then what's left, we're going to times that 3 by the 2, and we're going to get an answer of 6. Cool. So what we did here, we had x as the denominator, so we found the LCM, which is the highest variable. And then what we did is we divided the d by the denominator and then times the answer by the numerator and we got the x we did the same on this side over here and we got the 6 so our final answer was x is equal to 6 thank you so much for joining that's the end of our recording for today